Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Moshmi Das and continuing with my series on the anatomy of nose, today I'll be talking about the anatomy of nasal septum. Let's start our class now. So, our topic today is about the anatomy of the nasal septum. Now, first of all, what we need to know is the different parts of nasal septum. It has three parts, the columnar septum, the membranous septum and the septum proper. So first let's start with the columnar septum. Now the columnar septum is this particular portion as you see in the diagram over here. It is formed by the columella containing the medial crura of the alar cartilages. I have explained to you earlier uh, in the video that uh, the alar cartilage has a medial crust and a lateral crust. So these medial crusts here, they get united by fibrous tissue. This is forming the columella and it, it is covered on either side by the skin. So this region is known as the columellar septum. Next comes the membranous septum. The peculiar part of membranous septum is that it is actually consisting of a double layer of skin but it does not have any bony or cartilaginous support. It lies in between the columella and the caudal border of the septal cartilage. If you see in the picture over here, this region here is the membranous septum and as you can see, it lies in between the columellar septum and the caudal border of the septal cartilage. Now both these columellar and the membranous septum both of these, they are freely movable from side to side. Next, we come on to septum proper. Now, septum proper is basically consisting of an osteocartilaginous framework, which is covered by the nasal mucous membrane. Now, what does osteocartilaginous mean? It means that it has a bony part and it has a cartilaginous part. So, talking about the bony portion first, the major contribution is by two bones. One is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid, this particular bone over here, the green colored one, and the voma, which is over here, the red colored one. These two portions are the major bony parts for which is forming the nasal septum. Now these two, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone, as you can see from the picture, it is forming the upper one third of the nasal septum and it continues superiorly with the cribriform plate and the crista galli. This here is the cribriform plate. So it continues superiorly with this and posteriorly as you can see in the picture, it is articulating right over here with the sphenoid crest and postero inferiorly right over here with the vomer and antero inferiorly with the septal cartilage. So these are its uh, connections with the structures surrounding it. Next, the second major bone which is forming the nasal septum is the vomer, which is forming the posterior and inferior part of the nasal septum. So what it is doing is by its two ala, it is uh, articulating with the sphenoid rostrum creating the vomerovaginal canals. Now what is the importance of this canal is that this vomerovaginal canal transmits the pharyngeal branches of the maxillary artery. And as you can see from the picture, the inferiorly, the inferior border of the vomer articulates with the nasal crest right over here. This here is the nasal crest which is being formed by the maxillary and the palatine bones. And anteriorly, as you can see, it is, uh, it is articulating with the septal cartilage and the posterior border, as you see right over here, this posterior border is forming the posterior free edge of the septum. So this has been about the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vomer. And there are minor contributions by a lot of other bones, which are the crest of the nasal bone over here, the nasal spine of frontal bone, 
right over here the rostrum of the sphenoid right over here the crest of the palatine bone and the maxillary bone and the anterior nasal spine of maxilla so these are the little contributions that are being given to the bony part now that we have known about the bony portion next we will know about the cartilaginous portion so as we all know the major cartilage which is uh, composing the nasal septum is the septal also known as the quadrilateral cartilage this blue colored structure over here is the septal cartilage now this cartilage it is bound firmly by collagenous fibers to the nasal bone over here the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the vomer so basically all around its attachment to all the bony structures around it it is bound firmly to them by collagenous fibers and the septal cartilage is continuous with the upper lateral cartilage towards the bridge of the nose which is right over here in the midline and goes going towards the lateral end on both sides it is continuous with the upper lateral cartilage and uh, another very interesting thing is a projection of the septal cartilage called the sphenoidal process of the septal tail this region that you see over here this part of the septal cartilage is called the sphenoidal process or the septal tail which is actually a projection of the septal cartilage itself extending posteriorly between the vomer and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid and the inferior attachment of the septal cartilage which is right over here it is sitting within the nasal crest of the maxilla and is bound by looser connective tissue creating a pseudo arthrosis so we have found out what are the different parts of the nasal septum which is the columellar septum the membranous septum and the septum proper and the septum proper itself consists of two parts the bony part and the cartilaginous part so the structure that i told you about the septal tail why is it important it is important in the sense that it can sometimes serve as an additional source of a cartilage to harvest especially during surgeries like revision rhinoplasty now since we have been studying about the septal cartilage we should also know what is what is the clinical importance what is the surgical importance of this cartilage the septal cartilage it provides support to the tip of a tip and the dorsum of the cartilaginous part of the nose as you see over here this is the tip and this is the dorsum of the nose this support is given by the septum cartilage so in any any disease process or in any case where the septal cartilage is destroyed for example in septal abscess and in injuries and in tuberculosis or during septoplast septal surgery where we are removing excess amount of the septal cartilage like as in uh, submucosal resection smr this leads to the depression of the lower part of the nose and the drooping of the nasal tip so having an intact septal cartilage is very important for a cosmetic structural framework of the nose also we have seen the septal cartilage lies in the groove in the anterior edge of the vomer and inferior it is resting on the anterior nasal spine sometimes what happens is during trauma this septal cartilage may get dislocated from the anterior nasal spine or the vomerine groove causing a caudal septal deviation or a septal spur as we had seen in this picture this is where it is at this is where it is lodged in this part is anterior nasal spine and here is the vomer so in case of dislodgement in any direction what it does is it leads to a caudal septal deviation as we can see here in this picture this is a caudal septal deviation and as it is very evident from the picture itself what it does it it leads to compromising of the nasal airway leading to the patient feeling nasal obstruction and lastly as i told you the septal cartilage 
uh, from the midline as it goes lateral it is very intimately related to the upper lateral cartilage of the nose and is fused with them in the upper one third for this reason sometimes what we see a septal deviation if it exists it may be associated with deviation of the cartilaginous part of the external nose it is evident in this picture over here as you can see this is slightly deviated towards the right so this is all about the importance of the septal cartilage now there's another structure called the nasal septal swell body as you can see in this picture over here this particular structure now what is it it is basically a widened region of the anterior nasal septum you have to remember it is in the anterior nasal septum located anterior to the middle turbinate at the level of the internal nasal valve nasal valve is something that i've already discussed in my video earlier uh, so uh, what we have seen on histological analysis of the tissue of this nasal septal swell body is that it demonstrates an increased amount of venous sinusoids and few gran fewer glandular elements when compared to the adjacent septal mucosa so what what is really the importance of this particular structure so basically the high proportion of the venous sinusoids we are finding over here it suggests their capacity to alter the nasal flow in a very similar manner to the inferior turbinates this is why the structure is important next we move on to the blood supply of the nasal septum it gets its blood supply from both the internal carotid and the external carotid artery so the branches of the internal carotid artery here are the anterior ethmoidal artery which is right over here it supplies the antero superior part of the nasal septum and the posterior ethmoidal artery which supplies the posterior superior part of the nasal septum so these two arteries are taking care of the superior part of the nasal septum and the branches which are coming from the external carotid system are three branches the first of all is the sphenopalatine artery which is right here it is a branch of the maxillary artery which is supplying as you can see from the picture here the postero inferior part of the septum by a branch called the posterior septal artery secondly is a greater palatine artery which is also again a branch of the maxillary artery and it's supplying a septal branch right here which enters the nasal cavity through the incisive canal to supply the antero inferior portion of the septum so the spinal palatine is supplying the postero inferior part and the greater palatine is supplying the antero inferior part and thirdly the septal branch of superior labial artery which in turn is a branch of the facial artery it supplies the caudal septum and the columellar region this right over here so these are the five arteries which coming from the internal and the external carotid system forming the blood supply of the nasal septum and one little point over here Uh, the posterior septal artery the branch which is coming from the sphenopalatine artery it is the basis of the nasoseptal mucosal flap which is the workhorse for endoscopic skull base reconstruction next we come to a very important question which uh, we often have to answer in our theory papers is what is the little's area or the also known as the kaiselbach's plexus So this is basically a very vascular area in the antero inferior part of the nasal septum just above the vestibule as you can see right over here so what what is really happening here the what is happening here is a lot of the arteries which are supplying the nasal septum they come and they anastomose with each other in this particular antero antero inferior part of the nasal septum which is why this is a very 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 vascular area now the anastomosis is formed by the anterior ethmoidal artery the posterior septal artery which is a branch of the sphenopalatine artery as i already told you just in my last slide and the septal branch of the superior labial artery 
so these uh, these arteries are forming the Kaiselbeck uh, plexus over here and why 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 do we really need to know about this it is because this this Kaiselbeck plexus is the commonest site for epistaxis because of its very rich vascular supply and hence this also makes it more susceptible to injury from factors such as turbulent airflow or digital trauma so you'll see when a patient comes to you with epistaxis one of the commonest uh, one of the commonest causes is usually fingernail trauma and you'll be seeing that they they will just be doing this digital trauma right in this antero inferior part just above the vestibule and you'll be seeing crusts all over it this is one of the commonest cause of epistaxis and secondly this region is also the site of origin for the ble bleeding polypus or hemangioma of the nasal septum so this is why you need to know what are the arteries which is forming this anastomosis and why this region is so important to know about next we come to the venous drainage of the nasal septum the venous drain system is draining via sphenopalatine vessels into the pterygoid venous plexus posteriorly and into the facial veins anteriorly this was posterior and anterior and superiorly the ethmoidal veins that communicate with the superior ophthalmic system and there may be some direct intracranial connections through the foramen cecum into the superior sagittal sinus now amongst this vein one another the vein that you particularly need to know about is the retrocolumellar vein now this is a vein which runs vertically downwards just behind the columella so this is the columella region just behind the columella this vein runs vertically downwards it crosses the floor of the nose to join the venous plexus on the lateral nasal wall this vein is important because this is a very common site of venous bleeding in young people so this is all about the venous drainage and the retrocolumellar vein so there you go we have finished our class on the nasal septum what i have taught you is the different parts of the nasal septum the different bones and cartilage which is forming the nasal septum the arterial supply the two particular regions that you need to know the little area or kaiselbeck plexus and the retrocolumellar vein so thank you for watching guys i'll see you in my next video